Welcome back guys. Now in this video, let's discuss about the reflexes. Okay, so in reflexes, how many components are there? There are five important components in the reflexes. Okay, see whenever there is a harmful stimuli, for example, okay, whenever there is a harmful stimuli, for example, now whenever you touch a hot object or whenever you touch something very, very sharp, now this information, okay, this information is a harmful stimulus, right? This is a harmful stimulus. Now that harmful stimulus, yes, it is going to stimulate a receptor. First order neurons are activated. Now, this first order neurons, where they will go? This first order neurons are going to enter into the spinal cord. Usually, what we have studied, this first order neurons will end in the spinal cord. From the spinal cord, the second order neurons will go to the thalamus. From the thalamus, the third order neurons are going to go into the cerebral cortex. This is what we know. Okay. But whenever this is a harmful stimuli, okay, now there is not much enough time. You need to immediately react. Okay, so information going through the first order neuron, second order neuron, third order neuron, like you know, cortical processing, and from there, descending motor tract should have to activate. It takes a lot of time. So, whenever there is a harmful stimulus, now immediately you need to respond. Why? Right? Because otherwise, that harmful stimulus may actually cause damage to your body. So, what actually happens whenever there is a harmful stimulus? Now, we are not taking that information to the cortex. The information is now going to the spinal cord and the decision making will be done in the spinal cord. Okay. So who is the center in the reflexes? In reflexes, the center is the spinal cord. Okay. The center is the spinal cord. Now having said that, see what are the important components of the reflex? First thing, there are five important components of the reflex where there is a receptor that you know that stimuli have to stimulate the receptor here also. See this person is touching the sharp object. Now definitely here the receptors are activated. Okay, receptors, pain receptors are activated. Now from the receptor, something should take the information to the central nervous system that is the afferents. Uh, afferents are the inputs. So from the receptor, from the receptor, see, the first order neuron have to take the information to the spinal cord. So that is the afferent. Now, who, where the decision making will happen? The decision making is going to happen in the center, that is the spinal cord. Okay, now what happens? Efferents, efferents from the spinal cord, see, the efferent is coming out. Okay, the efferent is coming out and the patient is going to withdraw his hand. That is a response. So there is efferent and response. So what are the five important components of the reflexes? The five, important, the five important components are the starting with the receptor, afferents, center, efferents and response. Okay, having said that, now let's start with our first reflex that's the stretch reflex or monosynaptic reflex. Okay, stretch reflex or monosynaptic reflex is a very simple reflex, simplest of all the reflexes. Okay, now what exactly happens here? See, let's try to put it this way. Okay, actually all the reflexes, all these, these are these are like uh, uh, protective, all these are the protective reflexes. For example, whenever you suddenly stretch a muscle, okay, whenever you suddenly stretch a muscle, something like this, now that muscle will undergo contraction, okay. Otherwise, for example, if the stimulus is a powerful stimulus, what will happen? That powerful stimulus can shear, okay, it can, it can rupture the muscle. So, what happens? See, whenever you suddenly stretch a muscle, muscle will think, oh my god, this might be a harmful stimulus. So it will resist, okay, when you are stretching it, the muscle will resist and it will undergo contraction to prevent the damage. Otherwise, the muscle might, might, if it is a harmful stimulus, it might simply rupture. So what happens? Whenever you stretch a muscle, that muscle will undergo contraction. Sudden stretch will induce the muscle contraction. This is called as stretch reflex. It's a protective reflex. How this will happen, sir, if you ask me? See here, this is the thigh, thigh leg, and here is the tendon, patellar tendon, we all know, this is the quadriceps muscle. Now, what exactly you are doing here? You are doing the knee jerk. Okay, we are doing the knee jerk. Knee jerk is an example of stretch reflex. Are any reflexes are the example of stretch reflex only. So, what exactly we are doing? We are taking a hammer and we are tapping. Okay, you are tapping on the patellar tendon. See, when you tap here, okay, this is all, this is all the muscle. Muscle is having this tendon and this tendon is coming down like this. Okay, this tendon is coming down. Now, when you actually tap a tendon, what exactly you are doing? You are actually stretching the muscle. Okay, when you stretch here, see when you tap here, the muscle is actually stretched. Okay, the muscle is actually stretched. Already we know who is in, who is the receptor, who is all the time detecting the muscle length. The muscle length is detected by the myofibril length, or the muscle length I should say. The muscle length is detected by a receptor called as muscle spindles. So inside this muscle, okay, inside this muscle, there are these intrafusal fibers present called as the muscle spindles. Now whenever you tap here whenever you try to like you know hit with your hammer the muzzle length is increased now this muzzle length change is detected by okay this change in length is detected by muzzle spindles 
now muscle spindles are activated now this information have to go to the central nervous system so from here see now this green color fiber these green color fibers are the afferents already we have seen in the previous videos sir muscle spindles are innervated by the gamma motor neurons as the motor innervation at the same time muscle spindles are innervated by the group 1a fibers as well as the secondary fibers group 1a and 2 fibers so group 1a and 2 fibers see via the group 1a and 2 fibers the information is going like this where to the spinal cord to the spinal cord which type of information muscle length is increased okay now what these fibers will do see these these fibers okay these afferent fibers in the spinal cord they will directly okay they will directly terminate on the alpha motor neurons now what these are doing see action potential is going like this going like this and now this neurons this group 1a fibers and 2 fibers they will directly activate the alpha motor neuron now this is the alpha motor neuron coming like this from the ventral horn the alpha motor neuron is coming like this and the alpha motor neuron is activated now this alpha motor neuron is going to that particular muscle same muscle okay so what happens whenever the alpha motor neurons are activated there is muscle contraction so when you stretch a muscle okay information will go to the spinal cord and that will cause reflex contraction of the muscle so this is stretch reflex this is stretch reflex now what they will ask you in your exam is see in this stretch reflex what are the receptor afferents center efferents response now see here what is the stimulus the stimulus is stretching okay now what is the receptor the receptor who is detecting the stretch is muscle spindles so what are the afferents the afferent fibers are group 1a and 2 fibers this is 1a group 1a and 2 fibers and what is the center the center in all these reflexes is spinal cord and what are the efferents the efferents i see the efferent which is getting activated is the alpha motor neuron we all know the alpha motor neuron goes to the extra fusal fibers so that causes the contraction contraction so efferents are alpha motor neurons and what is the response the response is muscle contraction the response is muscle contraction and also remember this stretch reflex it's a simple reflex which is also called as a myotactic reflex okay myotactic reflex if we stretch a muscle what happens simple if we stretch a muscle will undergo contraction this is called as a stretch induced contraction stretch induced contraction so with this yes we have done with the stretch reflex now after this let's discuss about one more reflex which is called as the inverse stretch reflex okay inverse stretch reflex now what exactly is happening in the inverse stretch reflex now my question to you see imagine that there is this one muscle okay when you for example when you put some weight for example the muscle is contracted okay now this muscle is contracted there will be little tone in the muscle now you just try to contract that muscle more there will be more tone inside the muscle okay i'm just trying to try try to understand like this i'm just trying to hold a weight okay i'm just trying to hold a weight so what happens muscles are contracting so there will be tone inside these muscles okay tone increases in the muscle now for example imagine if i try to hold a 10 kilo dumbbell okay there is tone tone is increased now if i try to hold a 20 kilo dumbbell what happened to the tone muscles are more contracted okay muscles are more contracted so there will be more tone increased tone okay increased tone now if i try to hold 30 kilo dumbbell with one single hand muscles are more contracting they are contracting more tone increases okay so this is not something good for the muscles muscles can be damaged if there is more increase in tone the muscles can be damaged now for example now i am trying to hold okay now out of like you know out of show off imagine now if i try to hold a 40 kilo dumbbell or 50 kilo dumbbell now it's not possible okay it's not possible even if it is possible that will that will cause damage to the muscles so what happens so whenever there is increased tone in the muscles there will be a reflex starting to function what is that sir whenever you increase the tone in the muscle whenever there is like an you know, over contraction of these muscles then there will be automatic relaxation automatically that muscles will undergo relaxation so that i will immediately drop the weight so what is this this is the inverse stretch reflex it's again protective reflex so what exactly is happening here see stimulus increase the tension by a large force okay imagine that there is a large force okay there is a large force now what it is doing it is increasing the tension inside the muscle okay the muscle is having more tension now okay now what will happen is see for example now if there is more tension inside the muscle or more tone in the muscle what happens now the tone is detected by okay the tension is detected by golgi tendon organs okay so this more tension is detected by the golgi tendon organs okay now this information will go to the central nervous system this information is going to the central nervous system by which fibers afferents which afferents these fibers are called as group 1b fibers 
So group 1B fibers take this information to the central nervous system. Now central nervous system knows, oh my god, this fellow is doing, trying to hold it. Okay, large tension. He is trying to hold a large tension. This is something not good. So what happens now is, see this group 1B fibers, they will activate inhibitory interneurons. See, the inhibitory interneurons are activated. Okay, the inhibitory interneurons are activated. Now what this inhibitor interneurons will do, they will release GABA. So they will release GABA onto the alpha motor neuron. Okay, they will release GABA onto the alpha motor neuron. Now what happens, now this alpha motor neuron under the influence of GABA, it will become hyperpolarized, no action potentials will come. So what happened to the alpha motor neuron, it is inhibited. So when the alpha motor neuron is inhibited, so what happens, immediately that muscle will undergo relaxation. This is something protective, okay. So immediately the muscle will undergo relaxation, so you will leave the weight okay we we'll leave the weight so what is happening so increase in tension will cause a reflex relaxation of the muscle this is called as inverse stretch reflex inverse stretch reflex okay not only that here the agonist the agonistic muscle is relaxed so what happened to the antagonist the antagonist have to activate so that's what is happening here if you look here say this prior this one a fiber sorry not one a one b afferent this one b afferent what is doing it is activating the inhibitory interneuron Okay, inhibitor interneuron of agonist, inhibitor interneuron of agonist muscle, but at the same time, it will inhibit, okay, inhibit the inhibitor neuron of antagonistic muscles. Okay, so what happens, now see, this, it, this there are two inhibitor interneurons, this is the inhibitor interneuron going to the agonist muscle, this is the inhibitor interneuron going to the antagonist muscle. So, inhibitor interneuron to the agonist is activated, so it will release the GABA, so GABA will cause inhibition of, yeah, so GABA will cause inhibition of alpha motor neuron. Okay, to the agonist muscle. So now what is happening here? See, not only that, when the agonist is inhibited, antagonist need to be activated. Okay, so what happens? Now the inhibitor interneuron, which is like, you know, inhibiting the antagonist is inhibited. So now it will not release GABA. So what happens? Now this alpha motor neuron, which is going to the antagonist muscle is activated. So that causes contraction of the antagonistic muscles. So here two synapses are there. So two synapses are there. So this group 1B fibers, they are synapsing onto the two inhibitor interneuron. One inhibitor interneuron is going to inactivate, it is going to inactivate the alpha motor neuron going to the agonistic muscle, okay, where the tension is getting increased. So that muscle will be relaxed. Not only that, this 1B fiber is going to inhibit, inhibit the inhibitor interneuron, which is going to the, which is uh, going to the antagonistic muscle okay which is going on to the alpha motor neuron of the antagonistic muscle so if this inhibitory interneuron is inhibited means what happened to this alpha motor neuron it is activated so antagonistic muscle is activated so as there are two synapses this is called as a disynaptic reflex a disynaptic reflex now let's see one by one so what is the stimulus the stimulus here is increase the tension in the tendons increase the tension in the tendons okay increase tension in the tendons now what happened to the like, receptor? The receptor is activated. Who is the receptor here? The receptor is the Golgi tendon organ. Now this Golgi tendon organ is giving to the information, giving information to the central nervous system with the help of this afferents. What are the afferents? Group 1B fibers. So who is the center? The center is the spinal cord. Now what is happening in the spinal cord? The efferent, see spinal cord in the spinal cord, the group 1B fiber, this 1B fibers are going to activate the inhibitor interneurons. The inhibitor interneurons will inhibit, inhibitor interneurons will inhibit the alpha motor neuron. So if the alpha motor neuron is inhibited means automatically there will be muscle relaxation, muscle relaxation will be seen. Okay, so with this we have completed the topic of reflexes, the two important reflexes, okay, the components of reflex, stretch reflex and inverse stretch reflex are completed. Hope the video is helpful. Thank you.